how are you feeling about the season as it's been a couple a couple weeks since the end? You know, to be honest, Sansa was always like the most annoying character to me, uh-huh. and I didn't like her. And like, I don't, I didn't even like her in season eight until at an unknown point I did like her, <laughs> and now I like her. <laughs> <laughs> so you've just kind of changed your whole view of her. Yeah, I guess maybe after the the war against the Night King, she just stopped being annoying after that. But also now that I think about it, she also wasn't in those episodes. Yeah. I don't know. I'm cool with her with being Queen of the North, I guess. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe that's why I like her now. I'm totally cool with that, too. And that I mean, crown, that yeah. dire wolf crown. Beautiful, beautiful. Dope. Dude, when she pinned the dire wolf thing on Theon. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah, that was a great moment. Yeah. I liked that. I liked that a that's lot. That's in one of the Theon compilations, yeah. which I, you know. Theon was a great character. You know, yeah. I mean, I still overall hated the season. <laughs> like, you know, I, I've only met one person who liked the, the last couple episodes, which is Brett. I don't understand why. <laughs> why? Because... They ruined Jamie Lannister's arc. His whole arc, the entire show, was redemption. And then what does he do? He goes back to being with his sister because he just can't get away. It didn't like I thought he was. Everybody thought everyone I talked to thought he was going to go back and kill Cersei. No, I thought that and I wanted thought that, that as was well. his arc, and it would have been a great, great completion. He kills what got him in trouble in the first place. Yeah. He destroys it. Get, I mean, and, and yeah. he ends the war. And also, he kills the queen. He's now the king slayer and the queen slayer. I mean, that would have been an interesting thing, but they didn't do that. They, like, literally, it was the strangest thing in the world with him. Dude. They just, like, completely, for, they just, for some, no, re, no apparent reason at all, just decided to have him gone and be that way. Well, it's it annoying. Made no sense. It's annoying because, like, he and Brienne like finally got together yeah and that's been like building up for yeah. like yeah years of the show they're together for like one episode and then right like that night he like that was such a sad scene when she's like crying and he's like my sister's a hateful woman what is he a hateful he's a, person uh, and, and but so, so am I. I that actor is great he said that line really effectively yeah I mean like but it didn't make any sense because at that point in the show, he wasn't really like, I mean, that's well, that's the thing, though. But like, I kind of already knew that his character arc was dumb because he said because in he the was beginning never, of the episode, in the beginning said, of the season, he said, I, you know, I did everything I did for my family. I would have done more. it all. I would have done it all again. He but see, said. Yeah, that didn't make any sense with his arc either. And then I don't even really think like. Whenever he first sees Bran, yeah, I love that scene because, like, you're right. He's a great actor. Like that whole facial yeah, expression was, great. was crazy. But like, they didn't do anything. They didn't even like. They met up. They met up in the Godswood. Yeah. yeah. To chat. Yeah. And it was dumb. <laughs> yeah. It like wasn't very emotional at all, and I was like, whatever. I mean, honestly, the things we do for love. The only episode I think I hated more. I think my actually my least favorite episode of the entire season was the bells, what, uh, which was you know, like they forgot so many things. How come at the end of the of the episode the bells, Arya is riding a white horse somewhere, and then the the beginning of the fi- finale, no horse, and she's just walking down the street. What was the purpose of the white horse? Like what 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 was up with that? And then also like. I hated, like, yeah, obviously, like, Cersei and Jaime dying together. That was so stupid. Like, I actually felt sympathy for Cersei in that because it was a total, like, flip. It was like, this is not the way she dies. I was like, this does not make sense. It was almost like, did they just in one fell swoop make Danny like, way more evil than Cersei to the point where you're almost like, I don't hate Cersei that much. And obviously nah. Cersei's horrible, but you didn't get to see her like hardly at all in the entire season. You got to see her like five you to, scenes. You got to see her kill Masande. Yes. And all she did in that, all she did, all she did the entire season was do this. Yeah. That smirk. I there was no character s- development. I hate that smirk though. It was great. Oh, she's great. She's great. Smirk. But there was no character development with her. We barely got to see anything of what she was doing. Yeah. And so... 
by the time she died, I was just like, this, I don't even care, but I see this woman crying and I feel bad. And, but, and the only reason I felt bad and almost conflicted was because Jamie was there and I liked Jamie, but Jamie was being stupid. And so I was like, what is going on here? I don't know what to feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with my emotions? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then uh, what's it called? Aria? But, they totally forgot about the fact that she can take her, you know, people's piece. faces and everything. Yeah. They just, what was all that development for yeah. in the previous seasons? They just threw it out. Nothing. Nothing to it. And then also freaking... Uh, I, look, I, the one thing, I, the, the hound versus the mountain You're fight. You're going really fast. I have something to say well, on all of those. Oh, okay, well. Go the, ahead. The hound versus the mountain fight. Um, it was an okay fight. It should have been the coolest thing. It, like, that should have been way cooler. That's yeah. what I thought when I was watching it. The one part I really liked of that fight was, though, whenever uh, the hound's helmet came off, and, and or the, the, mountain. the mountain's helmet came off, and the hound went, yeah. That's you, all right. Yep. <laughs> and it, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, that's you. And it, I loved that. I love the Hound. He's like one of my favorite characters. Yeah. But no, same. to me, it was just like that whole episode of the Bells was just a bunch of mismatched, like the Hound fight. They had to get that in there. Cersei's death. They had to throw that in there somewhere. And then they wanted Danny to go crazy, even though there was no build up to her really being crazy. Uh, and they just like mashed all of this stuff together just to get it over with. That's what it felt like. And it was so poorly executed, like Danny turning evil. I'm fine with that idea. But the problem is, is that we never in the entire history of the show saw her slaughter innocent people. Dude. She, the entire show made it her job, like her, her sole purpose in life to protect innocent people. Yes, she crucified people and yes, she burned people alive, but none of those people were straight up innocent civilians. And yeah. then at the end of the bells, she has won. She has won. And everyone's saying, the bells, we surrender. And then she just decides to kill everybody. And instead, like, I thought she was going to fly towards the Red Keep and just burn Cersei there. And I would have been fine with that. But no, she turns, she goes row by row in the entire city. And I was just like, at this point, I was just like, this makes no sense. There was no build up to this madness. We had three conversations in like the entire so season Aria of her feeling riding unloved. on the white and so, horse. Yeah. Okay. That was Sorry. a cool scene. Cool. Yeah, and I liked nice. it because it was like so much chaos. And then, you know, kind of the coming out of that. I was hoping it didn't make any sense yeah. when you're watching it because you're like, what What's is this point? supposed to be? But I was hoping she was writing somewhere with like some purpose in mind. And she was going to pop back up later in the next episode. Yeah. She didn't. She, I guess, just rode to like shower and then like came yeah. back. Um, oh, no. Like but, literally the opening of the next episode was her walking down the street without the horse. Yeah. Like it was just like they forgot the horse. <laughs> It's just like, but um, yeah, that was super weird. But um, dude, I'm pretty sure when she came back to Westeros, the only continuation of the Faceless Man was her wiping out House Frey. Yeah, and then when Sansa first like finds out like where she's been and what she's been doing, but there's like nothing after that. Like, yeah, yeah you can tell that she's like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a very different person mm -hmm. than the last time she was in Winterfell. But uh, like, what what would have been the coolest thing for them to do with that? Because I know you talked about um, like her putting on like Bran's face for the Night King and stuff. We already talked Some about had that theory. That's a theory but that wouldn't like make, wouldn't work at it all. Wouldn't work because the Night King would know. He would know. Also, yeah. you can't just take. She would have had to kill Bran. Like, yeah. well, like, but a lot of people just, were thinking that Bran would tell her, "You ha you must kill me. This is my purpose. Fulfill it." Oh, that would but have been that sad as. But it wouldn't make any sense because the Night King could like see, that. could totally be able to see whether or not you were Bran. Yeah, um, he's like a weird. Even if you had his face spiritually on, spiritually demonic mark. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but uh, but no. Um, the other thing, but no, yeah, the the Danny thing, going mad, totally fine. But just Amelia was, Clark. Like, literally, there were like there were like three conversations in the entire show of her feeling unloved, and that's her justification for murdering innocent people. 
It was Amelia so... Clark did a fantastic job. She was great. I felt Her like performance was great. Like super, super fantastic. Yeah. Like I think when Misande died yeah. and that moment and that then look. whenever she's looking at the red keep, yeah. like oh my god, it's so believable. And oh, then, yeah. you know, just like her victory speech or whatever. Yeah. Was so good. I liked the speech. Like she did. Just wish I believed it. But she did such a good job the whole way through of portraying that character, even when they were writing that character like prematurely. Yeah. Um, Cause even like, dude, even in the throne room when she's talking about, you know, breaking the wheel together with yeah. Jon Snow and whatever. Yeah. Like, ah, like, dude. Yeah. I'm trying to find words besides, ah. Yeah. But, like, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. And, like, she almost seems good. Yeah. You know, even though technically she's supposed to be, like, the mad queen now and she's not good anymore. It's, like, even after everything she just did when she's talking to him, like, you... Like, you still want to support her. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, that was one of the coolest things in the previous seasons is when that illustration of, like, I'm going to break the wheel mm -hmm. came up. Yeah. And so, like, referencing that back, it's like, you just want that. You want that. You want her to break the wheel, even though clearly she can't anymore. But she is the wheel. She also never sat on the Iron Throne. Yeah. Yeah, she just touched it, didn't she? Well, yeah, she touched it, and then John came in and yeah. started talking about it. That, mm. but see, like, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Like, honestly, the first three episodes of the season, I liked overall. I thought that it was still it still felt like Game of Thrones, and the long night the that episode. I really loved that episode other than the fact that we didn't really get the payoff of knowing who the Night King was and what he was wanting to do. That, that made was, me so mad. That, that's, that, that was the big problem with that episode. Dude, um, dude. And, and, you Bro. know, and Brett was, you know, Brett was right about the battle tactics thing and stuff, but that, I, I, that still didn't take me out of the episode that much. But, uh, but bro, like, but no, yeah, the episode, like the fighting, the fear, like I, I like I still oh stand God. by the greatest zombie thing I've ever seen. Well, dude, like I've never, I've never been more afraid of the undead than I was in that episode. Like it really felt like they were facing the end of the world, the bro, end of all things. Dude, uh, those actors did such a fantastic job. Yeah. Like just that whole the hopelessness the whole, the looks, whole lineup yeah. dude like these are all these like fierce characters mm -hmm. that have like they're like, not even moving <laughs> just a little bit the like all I'm of psychotic i know all of these <laughs> <laughs> what? listen all of these fierce characters that are like have tears in their eyes Mm -hmm. Not like that they're crying, but that they're so afraid and like the situation is so heavy. Yeah. It's so good. I love that episode. Yeah. Yeah. And then I really like the first two episodes too. A lot of great character moments, just seeing the characters hang out with each other. Really like that. Um, the Dothraki? Yeah, the Dothraki. They died and then came back. And then back. they just suddenly came back. Yeah. What happened? You literally I mean, they watched, didn't all die, but most of them there died. There was like a handful yeah. that didn't die. Yeah. Also, Ghost? Love that dog. Yeah. Super cool that he survived. Why did John... And he was like charging with Ser Jorah, whatever. Yeah. He would have died immediately. immediately. Yeah. And he didn't. And I don't, I don't understand how, but. Yeah. And also I'm just pissed off. They kind of, they ruined, they, and they didn't completely ruin, but they, well, they kind of ruined Tyrion. They made the most clever character on the entire show. The stupidest one. Over this season and kind of last season too, but this season especially, like, they just made him stupid. Decision after decision, stupid. Yeah. And, it, it, like, they just, they made him a caricature, like a shadow of his former self. Mm -hmm. And it was so, it was so sad to see that. And then also John, like, I saw a video, uh... This guy did like a Game of Thrones writer's room for season eight. And this guy, it was like a pitch. 
and and it was it was like a parody thing, and he said uh, the, the writers. Uh, he was imitating one of the writers. He said, well, we had a lot of cool lines for Jon Snow this season, but then we just mysteriously mysteriously decided to replace all of them with She's Our Queen. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that, actually. <laughs> it's so true, though. They took Jon and made him this weak man. Like, it made me upset. Like, really upset. Like, because Jon was, for the entire show, like, I point to that, I'm like, Jon is a great masculine archetype like a great one and then they make him this like not a terrible one but they make him this more like sensitive like just moody distraught he's male always moody. well yeah he, he has but he's <laughs> he's still decisive like he he, and he and he's not like he's not like <sighs> she's my she's our queen even though i saw her slaughter slaughter an entire City, like I, I legitimately think that if he saw that, like John in, his, in John's brain, he would be like, "This is incorrect. We cannot allow this. This is she is not my queen anymore. I must kill her." And yes, he killed her, but like I don't think the whole the whole thing of him being like she's our queen and him making it trying to make excuses for her so he dude. doesn't have to come to that reality. I don't think he would do that. I Well, dude, okay, when the battle maybe do that a little on, bit, but bro, like here's the thing. I agree like his dialogue sucked. Yeah. But like in the battle and they start murdering people after the surrender. Yeah. Like you can tell how yeah, that shocked look, he is. That yeah. look was so good. It's great. So vegetarian. And it was just like realizing that they are fighting for the wrong side or yeah. that they've they're now the bad guys. Yeah. Like and so you know that John's character is still true. Like he tried to call his men back. He tried to like save that woman. He killed one of his own men because yeah. they were gonna rape her. Yep. Yeah. Um I think that, like... I mean, he wasn't totally ruined. No, and I think that... They took him down a notch. But here's the thing, like... You know, I think... I'm really glad that he had a conversation with Tyrion. Yes. Because they understand each other on a very unique level, even though they've spent barely any time together. Uh Uh-huh. Just that, like, bastards and broken things, and, and they kind of have always had that cool conversation since, like, season one. But, um, like, I don't know. I feel like you get super mad when he's like, she's my queen because you think that like, he's, he's just being like a loyal guy. Like a loyal he, mutt, a loyal wolf. Yeah. But dude, like, can you not see that? Like, clearly he's super, like, he almost says I that as see. like, he almost says that is like. Because he doesn't know what else to do. That doesn't mean that there's an internal conflict. I think... Well, like, see, I don't my think it's like, she's think... my queen. Like, wow. No, like, it's... I don't think... No, I totally I totally understand what you're saying. But my thing is, I don't think the character of John up to that point would have that level of internal conflict after seeing an entire city burn. Mm. I think he would be like, damn it, I love her. But she killed millions of people. Okay, but... And I have to kill her. I don't think that I think that's, that's... Oh, I think that that allots for a lot of internal conflict, Carter. But... Because here's the thing. You, you, you're you upset because you think that they destroyed John's character or brought him to less of what he was. And that might be did. true. They just, made him a shadow of his former self. Dude, he still killed her. And I like know, that scene, I, I honestly... I liked that scene Like too. his portrayal of that was still really good. Like he was like beside himself and he still even after is like it doesn't feel like the right thing mm-hmm. but he knew it was and he did it anyways yes like, i know that was good I, I i know it's just they made him more like i mean it's funny when people joke that it's like my queen that's yeah. all he, i don't want it my queen like yeah. that's all he says but i still think that there's a lot to go on yes i i just think they i think perhaps they hammed it up too much Ham. like I thought that, or maybe it just wasn't like you just poor. It wasn't as well written as it could have been. Like the dialogue just wasn't. He made he, he came off as more like this this weak bitch. That's what he kind of came off as. Um, 
whereas, uh, I mean, John in, pre in previous seasons had to kill people, uh, and he didn't want to do it. But he just he he had that thing that his dad had, which this is what you are supposed to do. Uh, he and, wasn't in love with any of them, though. Yeah, I well, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. But but see, my thing is like they almost. I would have bought his conflict if the romance between him and Danny had felt as real as it was between him and Ygritte. Him killing Ygritte after her million, burning he millions of people. He didn't kill I know, him. I know, but if he had had to kill Ygritte, I would have totally bought these excuses. But the relationship between Danny and John was not built up enough for me to go, oh, I believe that he would have this same, this, this just overwhelming conflict. Because we didn't get to see, like between season seven and eight, we didn't get to see this long you know very very deep romance we just got to see them make out some and have sex once and be kind of flirting with each other um dude when john is like rocking egret when she dies at castle black mm -hmm. that's such a oh that's such a sad scene but like also when they climbed up the wall mm -hmm. and like look over it for the first time yes I compare that scene to like the scene in season A where John and Danny like kiss at the waterfalls. Mm -hmm. and, like the thing with Eager, it's way better. <laughs> yes, yes. So I see what you mean. It's like, but I feel like it's short lived. And also, after John finds out that that's his aunt, that's when it just starts to like fall apart. So really there's probably only one season worth of them even liking each other. Yeah. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, and I, you know I liked the last scene between John and Arya. I liked that. That was a good moment. I really liked that. Um, oh, so sad. They had like no time together. Barely like screen time. Yeah. Oh, because they're my favorite, I know. Dude. I always wanted to see them hang out. Yeah. Because that's what they're built up as in the books. They were best friends as kids. We, we didn't get to see that. And, and like, like... They uh, could have done... It should have been t a 10-season show with 10 episodes each season. Yeah. They had plenty enough material. Plenty. Um, but they just decided to cut it so short for no real reason. Other than that, I kind of think they gave up. I mean, for goodness sake, they forgot... That winter lasts four years. And then Tyrion goes to jail and while it's snowing outside. And then he says, uh, as I've been here for the past few weeks, and it's like, and it's, oh, it's springtime now. And some people were like, oh, but that's because they killed the Night King. Yeah, they killed the Night King like, oh, I don't know, a long time before this. And yet winter was still happening after the Night King because as it happens, the Night King hasn't been coming he hasn't been around I mean, we don't know where he came from or when he sprung up right i mean we kind of know where he came from but we don't know that he's been alive for all this time that's the most annoying thing and, and that and that's that why like they just forgot that winter lasts for years i mean it's lazy there's no other explanation but it's lazy yeah. and I mean, winter clearly didn't lift when the Night King died because winter was still happening after the Night King died. Dude, I'm super upset that we lost all, all the of lore. the Night King's lore. And I really hope... I want those books. I really hope I want that those they... Books. <laughs> I really hope that there is more in the books there will the Night be. King. There will be. There already is. Like because everything, well, everything they we... build up to where like there is like something... You know, like, we're going to find out something crazy. Yeah. And we don't. Yeah. I know. I know. So that's why, like, when Arya killed him, it was awesome moment. But even when I was watching it the first time, I like, was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know. need to know. There needs to be more. Um, and apparently they're going to try and do some spinoff shows about the Targaryens and the Dragon Wars. Which could be interesting if they hire good writers and stuff. I would love if they did that, but it but just still have, pisses me off yeah. that they would like cut down a show like this. So that they could do other things. Just so they could like, like make you know, more money with like spin offs and just like whatever. It just ugh. Well yeah, and it's just like I couldn't 
I don't know. I just couldn't believe how bad the show got, especially after episode three. Uh, like episode four was terrible. Episode five I thought was even worse. And then episode six, the finale wasn't the worst ever, but it wasn't good enough. I don't know. It just really, really kind of pissed me off, so to say, so to speak. Um, Dude, but yeah. What the fuck is the Night Watch for now that the Night King is dead? Yeah, what is the point of the watch? The Watchers on the Wall now. What you watching? Granted, though, the Watchers on the Wall were the well, yeah, because they don't seem to have a problem with wildlings. That's anymore. the thing. Because they were trying to keep wildlings out. I'm going to go turn on the AC. I need those books so badly. Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring. Yep. Fuck. And neither Even of them are out. Titles are great. Neither of them oh. are out. And it's uh, it's very upsetting that neither of them are out. George R. R. Martin is a genius. And I know that his ending will be better. <laughs> I just know it. Yeah. I don't buy the idea that people have that the, the endings are going to be the same. Because if you've read the books, then you know that the the book has like twenty extra characters that aren't in the show. Yeah, I don't want to make. There's a giant spoiler I could have in the book that really changes things up, having to do with Targaryens. That's all I'll say. But and the Starks. That's all I'll say. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I can't remember what character. What? Oh, yeah. Well, no, people know about the Lady Stoneheart. Oh. But we don't have to talk about the Lady Stoneheart. But, yeah, I mean, there's a giant... There's so many giant things that are not in the show but are in the books that should have been in the show. 